Support for Radio Friends comes from LaBrunere Financial, where they work to ensure a lifetime of financial security for people from all walks of life, from investment services to retirement plans. If you're looking for a trustworthy company that has the experience and knowledge to put your interests first, contact LaBrunere Financial, a community-based investment counseling firm since 1966. And welcome to Radio Friends on this Monday, February 28th. As always, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And I've got a, a good friend of mine sitting ac- across the uh, across the way here, Dana Glantz, Osteo Strong. Good to have you here, Dana. Hey, thank you, Paul. Uh, we have known each other for, I guess, about the past uh, three years or so. And we've been talking about Osteo Strong. This is something... Now, you have your own business of Osteo Strong, but this was something that you were doing long before you got into business, yes. right? You were driving to St. Louis to partake in this. Why? Um, I did not want to go on pharmaceuticals as a first line of treatment for osteoporosis. And so I found this Osteo Strong, and there was one in Creep Cure. So I drove once a week for a 10-minute session for over nine months, and I stabilized my bone loss at nine months, and I reversed it in my hip in 18 months. So you were diagnosed with osteoporosis. You decided that you wanted to try something else before you started taking medication. Mm -hmm. You were driving back and forth to St. Louis for nine months, you said? Nine months. Nine months, and it did make a difference. Yes, definitely. And, and that's what inspired you then? You said, hey, why don't I just do this myself? Yeah, I, I had retired early, and uh, I came out of retirement and started the business. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, was, and, and, I, I felt so much better. I, had, I felt like I was 20 years younger, Yeah, and I was able to do a lot of things that I wasn't able to do before when I had the uh, bone loss and also the muscular strength loss. Now, we've talked about this before, but you, you have what's called the osteogenic loading machines, or those are called spectrums, right? Yes. What do those things do, and do they have more of an effect on your body besides just building back the bone loss? Yes, so osteogenic, meaning bone building, uh, loading, uh, is that they stimulate the osteoblast cells by putting a force of multiples of your body weight uh, once a week for about a 10-minute session. But on each machine, it targets the legs, the arms, the core, and the spine, and it puts this high-impact load onto those bones that is self-imposed by the person on the machine. So they're in complete control of how much load they do. Mm-hmm. And it stimulates the osteoblast cells, just like when a gymnast vaults and lands. Mm -hmm. They're getting somewhere between 8 and 15 multiples of their body weight. So we can emulate that same kind of impact in a very safe manner. And so it's telling the bones, hey, there's pressure on you. You need to get stronger. You need to make more mass here. Right. So when you... When you put this high-impact load onto the bone, the bone bends ever so slightly, and that's what triggers the osteoblast cells to wake up and start building bone. Okay. But there's no danger that it's going to break a bone when you do that. No. Because you have the control. The the, the person has that control. Right. And we also set the individual up on the machine so that they're in the best angle, especially on the upper GT, which is like a bench press in the upright position, and on the leg press. Okay. Um, If people want more information, uh, the best thing to do is go to your your, your Facebook page? The Facebook page, or they can go to osteo strong at me.com okay uh, either facebook page or osteo strong at me at me.com okay all right dana always a pleasure to have you here stay strong stay healthy and keep smiling all right <laughs> You've got a great attitude dana <laughs> thank you from osteo strong all right now we're going to talk about modeling putting putting a model together and i've got two guys who know what they're dealing with 
Uh, this is Colin Smilek. Good to have you here, Colin. You were on before. Yes. And Kent Barnes. And this is the Central Missouri Scale Modelers yes, that you correct. represent, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many people have you got in this group? Right, right now we have about 15 active members. And you do what? You get together and you put together scale models? Or you That's one of the things we do. Our club is there for uh, getting to figure out how to put plastic models together. There's different techniques to the different kits. Yeah. Like, say, with a car or the plane or the Millennium I, Falcon. I want to hold this one up because if you're listening on the radio, I am holding in my hands a model of the Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And this looks like I'm holding the model from the movie. It's about <laughs> as accurate looking as I can imagine. It's, it, it's getting there, yes. Yeah. So, so how, is this a difficult piece to put together? Not particularly. No, it took me about 30 hours to put that together. Yeah. Oh, you so. did this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's almost like a bunch of kids getting together playing. Isn't Pretty it? much it. We <laughs> never got out of the the desire to build uh, scale models and, right. when we started out as a kid. Thing, it's so. like a bunch of kids getting right. together, having a good, good time. Sure. Uh, then you've got uh, United Airlines, mm -hmm. Boeing 737. Mm -hmm. Is is this, uh, everything is accurate about it as far as the tail number? and then the wheel uh, landing gear number? More than likely so, yes. Uh, the, the research that goes into manufacturing these kits, they, they do a lot of research, yeah. and those numbers are probably, probably accurate. And yeah. Kent, you are putting together what? This is a uh, FE-2B. It's an early World War I fighter. Uh, and, and when it gets to the research, if you open up the instruction manual, it will go into the history of the aircraft. And because there are none of these left anymore, there's a company in New Zealand that is building replicas, and they make the models off of the replicas. Yes. Uh, and you have to have a lot of patience to be able to put these things together. Mm -hmm. And then when you're gluing, I, I, I think I told you this last time you were on, I put together the Cuddy Sark, yeah. mm -hmm. the model. It had to be 45, 50 years ago. Okay. But I remember I would get glue on my fingers and then it would stick. To <laughs> <laughs> sure. Absolutely. It would stick to the strings that you're trying to put up. Right. But if, if people want to come and join your club, uh, what do they need to do? Well, check us out on online. Uh, our website is cmsm dash ipms.org uh, go ahead and check us out there it does a list when our meetings take place and how to become a member okay so it's really easy uh, we do have meetings once a month every third Thursday okay so we get together and we talk about new models uh, shows coming up or whatever all right so it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun and please yes. come back again and show us some more models will you we ya? will definitely. all right Colin thank Ken you. thank you so much all we're right. out of time for today if there's something you'd like to hear or see I'd love to hear from from you, that's Pepper P at Missouri.edu. Have yourself a nice day.